Hi everyone, so this is a little bit of a different video from me because it is not at all beauty related and I want to just quickly talk to you about how I upgraded the RAM and the hard drive on my MacBook Pro because while I love, absolutely adore Apple products, I think they definitely overcharge on their upgrades, especially for their laptops. So I first want to preface and say that I am not a computer or an Apple genius. Um, everything that I'm going to mention in this video I either learn from experience or through my own research like googling things and I also have a bunch of links in the bottom bar below that I found really really helpful so if you want you can go check those out so there's two things that you can upgrade to boost the performance of your MacBook Pro and both of those two parts are user serviceable parts which means that if you change them it doesn't void your warranty so the two parts I've already mentioned earlier which is one the RAM and two the hard drive so for the standard base model of the most recent um, MacBook Pros, um, this is just the 13 inch like I said and it's the i5 version. So the base model in this particular MacBook Pro, it costs I think $12.29 and all it comes with is 4 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes of hard drive which is pretty substantial because um, my 2009 version that I upgraded from, I think it only had 320 gigabytes and it only had um, I think 2 gigabytes of RAM. That is quite a bit of an upgrade just talking in terms of base models. So what I wanted to do was I obviously wanted to upgrade the RAM and I also wanted to upgrade to an SSD because SSDs are the new thing. There's pros and cons for it but it just runs really nice and smooth on the MacBook and I had to have it. So if you were to configure your MacBook on Apple's website with 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD, it would probably cost you roughly an extra $1,100 plus HST if you have HST in your province if you're in Canada. But if you were to configure that yourself and buy the products through a third party like Tiger Direct or Canada Computers or another company like that, you could potentially save so much money because what I did was I purchased the 8 gigabytes of RAM which was I believe $49.99 and I also purchased a 512 gigabyte SSD which was only $379.99 so altogether it cost under $500 including HST which saved me roughly like $600 and honestly, it is so easy to do, and I will be showing you a demo later in this video. And if I can do it, anyone can do it. The only thing you really need to keep in mind if you're going to go down this route is to make sure you know the specs of your laptop. And also, whatever you take out, make sure it's the same quality that you're putting back in. For example, the RAM. Um, for the mid-2012 um, version of the MacBook Pro, it takes a 16 megahertz RAM. So you obviously don't want to be putting something in lower than that or something higher because it just might might not work as well with the laptop. I do have a link in the bottom bar below that will help you choose which type of RAM to put back into your MacBook Pro, so go check that out if you are interested. I also wanted to quickly mention how I loaded the operating system onto the solid state drive. It's not a unique method or anything like that, but I just wanted to kind of share my experience with it. So basically what I did was I put the solid state drive into an external hard drive casing and that's how I loaded the operating system onto it. I definitely prefer this route because it's just a lot easier. You can use programs like Carbon Copy, I believe it's called, and also Super Duper to basically copy your hard disk drive onto the solid state drive. That way when you pop the solid state drive in, it's ready to go and all of your files in there so it kind of kills two birds with one stone. I also prefer this method because your MacBook Pro allows you to boot up from an external hard drive so once you are done copying your hard disk drive to the solid state drive, you can boot up using the solid state drive before you actually put it into your MacBook Pro so you know if everything is running properly before you have to unscrew all the screws on the bottom and um, go through all that work. Also I didn't actually purchase an enclosure for my solid state drive, I actually just used an external hard drive that I already had. Um, this one is is iOmega and I wouldn't recommend taking apart um, like a Western Digital external hard drive because just the way they're made they're kind of 
sealed pretty tightly. Um, this iOmega one just has two screws here on the bottom and you can just slide the hard disk drive out and replace it with a solid state drive. Um, so this is really easy to open and that's why I chose to use this. This actually worked really great with a solid state drive. There wasn't any issues um, with it not connecting or anything like that. But I would recommend that you just go purchase an enclosure because once you take your hard disk drive out, you can always enclose that one and use it as an external hard drive also. Okay, so I think that's all I really wanted to mention, so let's get on with the demo. So I sped this up just to save a little bit of time. You're going to want to first remove the bottom of your MacBook, obviously, and you're going to use a small Phillips screwdriver to remove all of the screws. Uh, be sure to remember that the top three screws on the right are a bit longer than the other ones, so just remember kind of where you got those from. I think out of the whole entire process, this was the most difficult for me because some of the screws were in there really tight, so it took a little bit of time to get them out. You're going to peel off the lid and begin to take out the RAM. You just kind of um, press gently on the two clips on the side. They're pretty flexible and you can't really do that wrong. The RAM will only fit into the slots a certain way, so you don't have to really worry about um, putting it in the wrong way because it only will go in a certain way. Moving on to the hard drive, we're going to remove the bracket holding the hard drive in with the same Phillips screwdriver that we were using earlier. And then we're just going to gently pull up the hard drive and remove the power slash SATA connector. Now there are four screws on each corner of the hard drive. We're going to remove those and put them onto the new SSD because that will just help it mount into place when we slide it back into its spot in the laptop. And the screwdriver that we're using in this instance is actually a T6 screwdriver, so it actually looks a little bit like a six-pointed star. Once the screws are in place, we're just going to um, put the SATA slash power connector back into the SSD and then replace the bracket that we had previously removed. So this is the last step. Now we're just going to put the lid back on. I would recommend just putting one or two screws in at first, just until after you boot it up and you make sure everything's running properly. And then once everything is, you can just put the rest of the screws back in. It's much easier this way, just in case there is a problem. Okay, so here's the boot times. This is where the SSD really shines. So I started both of them at roughly the same time. And right off the bat, the SSD automatically goes to the Apple logo screen and within 10 seconds it's already at the login screen and also within 15 seconds it's already ready to go ready to use as opposed to the hard disk drive which is at 20 seconds it hasn't even reached the Apple logo screen yet so I left this at real time just so you can get a feel for how long the hard disk drive actually takes So at 35 seconds, the Apple logo has finally appeared, which means we're halfway through the boot up process. So we're almost reaching a minute and we're just now getting to the login screen. So I'm gonna type in my password and at a minute and seven seconds, it is finally ready to go. So as you saw, the solid state drive is a really great investment. Not only does it boot your laptop faster, but also opens programs faster and it just runs really nicely with the OS X. I didn't really get to demo the improvement that an increase in RAM makes, but increasing RAM in any laptop is just a really great thing. It helps your programs run a lot faster and smoother, especially if you run programs like Final Cut Pro. Increasing the RAM will definitely help with any kind of project that you're working on. So to recap, if you want to save a little bit of money and you don't mind spending an extra 20 minutes to set up your laptop, I would highly recommend going this route because like I said, use their serviceable parts so you won't void your warranty and you'll save tons of money because Apple upgrades are really, really overpriced. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions or anything like that in the bottom bar below and I will see you guys next time. Bye!